Mr. Myas is here. And today we are talking about the limit definition of the derivative. So I've got this picture here, and let me describe it real quick. I've got a function, and this function is just some function y equals f of x. And on this function, I have two lines. I have the secant line, which is any line that crosses through two points. And I have the tangent line. And I'm going to put that point on the same place as that secant line right there. And that point is going to be at an x value of x. I'm just going to call it x. And then this value right here where the secant line ends, that's going to be x plus delta x because that's the change in x that we have from this point to this point. So if I go up to here to the function, I have f of x. That's my y value, right? And if I go up to here, I have a y value of f of x plus delta x. Okay, so the slope of this secant line, the slope of this secant line is going to be equal to the, um, the rise. Okay, I've got my triangle here, and it's going to be uh, the rise. So how far, it's rise over run, right? So how far does it go up? Well, it goes up whatever this is right here. And this distance right here is going to be that. That's called the change in y, right? And that's the difference between f of x and f of x plus delta x. So it's the difference minus f of x, right? It's the distance between those. So my slope of my secant line is, so it's going to be f of x plus delta x minus f of x, right? So that's the rise over the run. What's the run? It's just delta x, right? So it's rise over run. So if that is the slope of the um, secant line, what is the slope of the tangent line? Well, the slope of the tangent line, we want this slope here. So if you can imagine me taking this secant line and take, keeping this point and moving this point down here, then I got this slope here. And then moving the point down here and then down here, and, to, and then I'm gonna, really what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move that point closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to that point, so you can see, hopefully, that the line actually gets closer to that tangent line. That slope is getting closer to the slope of the tangent line. So what's happening? I'm taking delta x, and I'm shrinking it, right? And I'm shrinking and shrinking and shrinking and shrinking it down to zero. So the slope of the tangent line is actually a limit. It's the limit as delta x approaches zero of the slope of the secant line. This right here, this is called the derivative. All right, so the slope of the tangent line is the derivative. The derivative at a point of a function is the slope of the tangent line. In fact, um, we can actually find the derivative of a function, because the, the derivative of a function could also be a function, is also a function, and we write it in this way. So this is just um, notation now. So we write it either, so the derivative is like this, this is also equal to, okay, y prime is another way to write it, we call it y prime. We can write it as f prime of x, which is, you'll see all the time. We can write it as dy dx, dy dx is the differential y differential x, so dy dx, we often see it like this as well, d dx of f of x, okay, because I'm differentiating f of x with respect to x, that's what we say, with respect to x. And this is all equal to this right here, this limit, another form of that limit is the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. And you've seen that. I think some of you have seen that before. Okay? So, um, that's the slope of the tangent line. I'll come back and we'll do a couple examples. Okay? Boom. I'm back with example number one. Okay, like a Power Ranger. Alright, so we have f of x equals x squared plus 2. I put our limit um, definition of our derivative up there. and We're going to use that. So, we're going to plug this into here, into our limit. Okay? So, f prime of x is equal to the limit as delta x approaches zero of f of x plus delta x. Okay, so that's going to be x plus delta x squared plus two, because I'm just plugging in x, minus 
x squared all over delta x. Okay? All right, so then I'm going to do a little bit of work here to simplify this stuff here. I'm going to do that in green. All right? So um, it's not part of the equal sign. Okay? So we're just going to go over here. We're going to, we're going to foil this guy out. So we got x squared plus 2x delta x plus delta x squared minus or plus 2 minus x squared all over delta x. All right, what do we see happens here? Well, uh, the x squares simplify out. We've got a delta x in both of those, so I'm going to factor that guy out and get 2x plus delta x squared. I'm sorry, plus delta x. I took one out. Over delta x. And then what happens to the delta x? Right? And so we end up with the limit as delta x approaches 0 of 2x plus delta x. So what do we do? Plug in 0. Plug in 0 in for delta x, and we get 2x. And there's our derivative. Uh, part B of this was, what if we wanted to find f prime of 3? Well, since we wanted to find f prime of 3, we already know what f prime of x is. It's 2x. So we're just going to plug in 3 in here for x and we're going to get 6. Okay, I'll come back with example number 2. Alright, here we go. Example number 2. We want, we have y equals x squared of x. We want y prime. The first thing we're going to do here is we are going to put our limit together. So, y prime is equal to the limit as delta x approaches 0 of square root of x plus delta x minus square root of x over delta x. So just like we did in the last one, we're going to plug in x plus delta x into our square root here and simplify that square root. I'm going to go and do that on the side again. So how do we simplify this? We are going to use the conjugate. Conjugate what? Conjugate. Get. Get her done. So square root of x plus delta x minus root x all over, I'm sorry, we're going to times it the top and the bottom minus delta x, okay? And multiply that to the top and the bottom. Then we're going to foil that guy out. That's going to give us x plus delta x when we multiply these two. The middle term is going to drop out minus x all over. And you know what? I'm just going to leave this alone because I know later on something nice is going to happen, okay? Oh, I'm sorry, this is a plus. Plus, plus. Conjugate. Conjugate, not conjugate. Conjugate, not, whatever. Okay, X is cancel out there, and this is what I have left. Actually, look at that. These cancel out, and then look at these. These are going to end up canceling out too. And I'm going to have a 1 right there. So what I'm going to have left, I'm going to have the limit as delta X approaches 0 of 1 over square root of x plus delta x plus x, square root of x. Now we're going to plug in our zero. What do we end up with? 1 over square root of x plus square root of x, which is 1 over 2 root x is our, is our y prime. All right? Okay, that's that one. Come back for number three. Okay, I'm back. Last one. Here we go. Example number three. Y equals f of t equals 2, 2 over t. I want dy dt, which is another way of writing the derivative. So I want the limit as delta uh, t approaches 0. And I'm going to do uh, t plus delta t because I'm taking the derivative with, with respect to t. So I've got 2 over t plus delta t minus 2 over t all over delta t, all right? So I'm going to do that math on the side here to, to uh, simplify that out. And the way I'm going to do that is, uh, let's see, what did I do on my paper here? I think that I did a common denominator. So we're going to go 2t minus 2 times t plus delta t all over t times t plus delta t all over delta t, right? 
And then I'm going to simplify that and you see if I distribute this, I'm going to get negative 2t minus 2 delta t, which is going to cancel these guys out. And I'm going to have negative 2 delta t all over delta t from here, the t from there, and this stuff in here. And then I'm going to get rid of those delta t's and that should be it. So, come back over here. I've got the limit as delta t approaches 0 of negative 2 over t times t plus delta t. When I plug in 0, I'm going to be left with negative 2 over t squared, because it's t times t, all right? And there you go. That is the last one for me. I'll see you guys later.